drag and drop is a common tool that gives developers the ability to provide rich experiences for web apps. In this example that's using the native HTML drag and drop API, if I wanted to add some ice cream to my order ticket, I can simply click and drag this over to my ticket and we can see that it was added. Similarly, I shouldn't spoil my dinner, so I'm also going to grab some fried chicken to start. But when this interaction is critical to your application, we wanna make sure that we're still able to test it to make sure that it's working as expected. So in my code, I'm starting off a new test where first I'm gonna visit that same page with our example, and I'm saying it should drag fried chicken to the order. Now, like we usually do, the first thing we wanna do is grab the actual item we wanna select. So here we can see that I found my list element where I'm going to grab that ID of menu fried chicken. In my test, I'm gonna run sci.get where I'm going to pass in that ID as my selector and I'm going to use the trigger method so I can trigger a new event where that event is going to be drag start. Now, if I try to run this event as is inside of Cypress, we can see that we're getting an error that says that it's missing something or particularly it's trying to set data, but it's undefined. When we're using any of our drag events, we also need to pass in a data transfer property. When we're using the HTML drag and drop API, what we're ultimately doing is using the data transfer object in order to take data from one place and put it in another. So when we're actually testing this drag and drop, we also need to provide that data transfer. So let's start off by passing in a second argument to this trigger method, where we're going to define an object where we're going to pass in a data transfer property. So instead of defining this in line, we're going to actually use this in a second method. So at the top of this statement, I'm going to say constant data transfer, and I'm going to set that equal to a new data transfer. And now while it's not doing anything yet, we can see that it was successfully ran. And we can even see that if we hover over this, we can see that it's starting to actually grab that item. But now let's make it actually move over to the order. So to do that, I want to actually drag this item into the section that is accepting this drag request. And in this case, it's going to be this div that has an ID of plate. So I'm going to run a second side.get statement where this time I'm going to pass in plate. But again, I'm going to use that trigger method where this time I'm going to say drop. But again, I'm going to pass in that second argument where we're going to pass in that data transfer. And if we look inside of Cypress, we can see that it already worked. And if we look through the steps, it first grabbed that item and then it moved it over to our plate. Now this didn't really take too much to add, but what if we wanted a slightly simpler way to do this? We could instead install this Cypress drag drop plugin where we have an easy way to specify exactly where we wanna drag and where we wanna drop all in one simple statement. Now I've gone ahead and already installed this plugin, but what if this time we wanted to drag ice cream to the order? Similar to before, we first wanna grab the ID of our item, which in this case is menu ice cream. So I'm going to run sci.get and we're going to specify menu ice cream. Now this time, instead of triggering our event, I'm going to use the drag command, which because we installed that plugin is now available on the sci object, but this time we wanna pass in a slightly different ID. Because of how it works, we wanna drag this item into plate items instead of the plate. So we're going to use this ID of the unordered list that wraps these items of plate items. But now if I pass in that ID of plate items, we can see that as Cypress goes through, it was able to successfully move that ice cream over. Now, one important thing to note between these two ways that we're testing this is with this first way, we're only using the drag start and drop triggers, where in the second instance using the plugin, we're able to use a variety of different options to try to attempt that drag and drop. This method of using the drag start and drop may only work using the actual native HTML drag and drop API, where if we actually look at what's happening with the plugin, we can see that it's triggering a variety of different methods, including the pointer down, mouse down, and that drag start in order to try to attempt to actually drag that item over. Because there's a variety of ways to actually implement drag and drop, and because some developers won't actually use the native HTML API, we need to also see the variety of ways that we can test the drag and drop. Where because we're using the native HTML API, we can be confident that either of these methods will work, but we need to make sure that we're testing our applications for how they're actually implemented.